All right, today I'd like to illustrate a use case. I'm using a MacBook Pro, and I'd like to create a Windows instance on AWS. All I really want to do is create a Hello World HTML page hosted by AWS in one of these instances. And I'd like to be able to access this instance through RDP, which is my MacBook Pro, and I'm going to connect to it using an RDP client. And the other use case is I'd like to be able to connect to the web page and view it, view it in my browser. So this is through the uh, remote desktop protocol, and this is through HTTP. To do this, I need to set up a VPC, which is a uh, virtual private cloud, or think of it as your own network. I also need to create a public subnet. That's like a network segment that's available in DMZ, or internet facing. So the internet is allowed to make calls to instances within that public subnet. You could also create private subnets, and that's great for backend services and databases, but we're not doing that today. Now to make that happen, the VPC needs to be set up with an internet gateway, and then requests that go through the gateway need to go through a router. It's going to use a routing table, and it's going to point those public IP addresses and translate those to private IP addresses uh, which represent the instance. And it's pretty straightforward. I could go ahead and create all of this myself and if you're making modifications you eventually will need to access those items but to set up initially I'd like to use the wizards provided by AWS. So let's go ahead and do that. So first I'm in my AWS management console. I'm going to go to the VPC section here and it could create the individual VPCs by clicking this button right here, but that only gives me some of the goodies that I'm looking for. Rather, I want to launch the VPC wizard, and that's going to enable me to set up the, the gateway and the routing tables and the router. It's also going to handle the calculation for my uh, CIDR blocks. Here they're recommending that your network, which, which has two segments uh, uh, allocated, and the subnet, which has one segment allocated. So here the CIDR block for the uh, VPC has been populated. I'm going to give it a name. I don't really care which availability zone we're going to use. I'll call this RDP Demo Public Subnet. I'll create the VPC. Now that the VPC has been created, uh, we can take a glance and, and look at some of the other pieces that were created for us. We see that the Internet Gateway has been created. Also. Route tables were created and populated. Here you can see the routes were entered for us. And the subnet was also created for us. Alright, so the next thing that we'd like to do is create the EC2 instance and put it in our subnet. So all you have to do is click Launch Instance. And because I'm trying to launch a Windows instance, I'll just do a search and I'm going to go ahead and use the free tier eligible. I'm just doing a hello world, so the minimum if necessary is good for me. Again, I'm going to use the free tier provided uh, type. Uh, T stands for general. If it's C, it's for, for computing, and R is for uh, memory. Uh, they have many, many kinds of type. I just need the bare bones. Only need one instance. Here you can see that uh, it selected the VPC that I created. Be careful because AWS provides you a default VPC and if you've created a new one you want to make sure you have that selected otherwise the instance is going to be created in the other network. Also the subnet that I created has been selected. Now because the subnet wasn't set up for auto assigning public IP addresses I want to go ahead and enable that. If I don't do that I won't be able to get to my instance from the public internet through my browser. So what this does is AWS will allocate one of their public IP addresses dynamically to the instance. Now this isn't a permanent IP address. If I wanted to do that I would use Elastic IP. But since I'm going to create my hello world and tear down the instance when I'm done, this is good enough for me. Now they do give you some default storage. You can see that it's flagged as delete on termination. This is what they call instance storage. So if I terminate the instance, I'm also going to lose any data that I've put on, on this block storage. If I wanted to create a D drive, I could just add a new volume, and this is deselected, so it'll stick around if I uh, shut down the, the server. But I don't need that. Again, it's just a hello world. 
and I'll just give it a name. Now here it's asking me to create some security groups. If I had some security groups already created, then I could select an existing one. Here we see the default one is created for the VPC, but that doesn't give me everything that I want. So I'll go ahead and create a new security group with two different roles. Remember, there's two kinds of, two ways that I want to access the instance. One is through RDP and one is through HTTP. So here they've populated it with RDP because I'm creating a Windows instance. They figured I'm going to need that to access the server. Here the source is set to all zeros. That means that any IP address would be sufficient. I could set this to just my IP address. That would be more secure. But since this is a quick demo, um, I don't really care so much about constraining that. I do want to add another rule. This one's for HTTP, which is port 80. And again, it's going to allow uh, requests from, from any source. I could add HTTP as a source, uh, but that would require me setting up a certificate with a, a CA. And um, again, this is just a hello world. And here you have a chance to review all the things that you selected. Here's the security groups. Here are the storage details. And let's go ahead and launch. Now before it launches, it's going to ask us if we want to uh, use an existing key pair or create a new one. I believe I've removed all my key pairs, but I, so I'm going to create a new one. We'll call this RDP demo. And the great thing about that is if you're dynamically spinning up new instances, you can save these key pairs to, to generate passwords for each instance. This is great when you're auto-scaling. So I'm going to download this and save it for later. I'll need that to retrieve the password for my administrative user. And here you can see the instance is spinning up. I'll go ahead and show you down here that a key pair that I had created is sticking around so I can use it again. Also, if I click on security groups, the security groups that I created are sticking around. And I could use those again for other instances. The volume that I created for the C drive, that's also here. I can access this and, and modify it. Now here I can see that my instance is running and it's just going through its final initialization checks. Now as requested, it's created a public IP address for me. I'll get back to that later. There's also a private IP address, so the router will take requests from this public address and, and route it to this private address. So now I want to go ahead and connect. I'm going to use an RDP client. Here you can see the DNS that the RDB client is going to use. It created a user called administrator, and now I'd like to get the password. All I need to do is, is paste that PEM file that I downloaded earlier. Paste that in here. It's going to decrypt the password, which I'll then copy. And now that I have that, I can try to actually down, download the remote desktop file. That's the RDP file. Now, previously, I have installed an RDP client for the MacBook. Microsoft publishes that for you on the App Store, and all you have to do is uh, click on that. Then you just paste the password in that was given to you. I have successfully connected to my Windows instance using an RDP client. So now I can go ahead and set up my Hello World web page. What I need to do next is actually set up IIS. Here I'm going to select the web server IIS. OK, the installation is successful. So now I'll go ahead and open up IIS. I can see the default website that's deployed with IIS. And I'll go ahead and click to browse. And here we can see the default website is showing up when I navigate to localhost. Now I'd like to change that to a Hello World page, so I'm going to click on the Explore button. And I'll simply add a new page. Change the extension to HTM. 
and I'll go ahead and enter some basic HTML. And if I go back to the browser and hit refresh, I should see this new Hello World page that I had created. Now the next thing that I'd like to do is verify that I can access this page from the public internet. So here I'll go back to my instance details and I want to copy this address. Now I have to be careful because um, the default is to try to access this page with HTTPS but I don't have a certificate so it's going to give me a warning. And there we go. All right, so that was a quick demonstration on how to configure IIS in a Windows instance on AWS. Hope you found that useful. Take care.